go. Well, thank you everybody so much for being here today. My name is Corwin Thompson. I am one of the lead marketing specialists here at Monogram, and I'm so excited to sort of kick off our five in one oven training today. So as I mentioned, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the brand. Then we're going to go over some team's housekeeping items and then I'll kick it over to Chef John, who will go over the product training for us. OK. Just going to share my screen here. OK. So Monogram is the top of the line, most elevated product from GE. GE has a rich heritage of appliance manufacturing for over 100 years, which carries a legacy of durability and craftsmanship. In January, Monogram launched two new collections, and in doing so, we developed three main pillars to really support the, the look and feel of these collections. The first one is materials. Monogram sources the highest quality materials for our appliances. The second is performance. Every monogram appliance provides the same experience in your kitchen as it does with our chefs. And lastly is ownership. Every, uh, we make our appliances, appliance ownership an enjoyable experience through personalized service and our Wi-Fi connected appliances. So I'm sure you're ready to see the new collections now. So here is a picture of some of the appliances from our statement collection which features edge to edge handles with polished, polished stainless steel and rich interactive graphic displays. It's a modern update to our former collections, but it fits wonderfully in a kitchen with traditional styling. The beautiful brass accents really unify the overall aesthetic look and feel of the collection. Then we have the minimalist collection. This is the most contemporary design we've ever had. It features precisely engineered metals, expansive glass, and LCD screens that come together in a streamlined design that flushes beautifully with cabinets. Okay. And now, before we get into the really fun stuff, Okay, I hope everybody can see my screen here. Um, we're going to go over a few housekeeping items. Um, so first, as I mentioned, we did unmute you all, or mute you all, I'm sorry, as you can see your little mic has an X through it, but we really encourage participation from you all. So if you have any questions or comments, please utilize the chat box here. I'll be monitoring it myself. Um, so when there's a good kind of stopping point within um, Chef John's presentation, I'll kind of interrupt him and, and ask questions or comments. Um, second is you are going to want Chef John front and center on your presentation. And how you're gonna do that is you're going to pin him. So there's gonna be this hey, I'm still seeing your PowerPoint. You are? Yeah, we're all on page four of your PowerPoint. Oh, is this better? Yes, I can see you now. So if you want to show how we access the. You can see Teams, right? I just see you. Oh, you just see me. OK, thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> How's this court? Yes, got it. OK, perfect. All right, we'll start this again. Sorry, guys. Um, OK, so here is the chat box. Um, so this is where you can feel free to um, ask questions or comments, and I'll be monitoring that. So um, please feel free to participate. We want to have a good um, dialogue here. And then next to the chat box button here, you're going to see the show participants button. So you're going to click that. Here is a list of participants in alphabetical order, and you're going to go down to find John Liddell. This is our chef who's going to be training today. You're going to click the three dots here, and then you're going to click pin. And that way, John's video will be front and center on your presentation. 
if anybody has any questions on that, please feel free to chat or unmute now. Okay, John, I believe I'm going to pass it over to you. All right, thank you so much, Corwin. I appreciate that. Um, I know a few of you guys out there on the call today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm John Liddell. I'm the executive chef here, um, downtown Chicago today. Get to visit our showroom and start wiping some dust off things and visit my five in one oven um, that I'm normally doing demonstrations on for, and uh, or actually our ownership clients, uh, architects, designers, you know, the, you know the industry types where um, just trying to show everything off, bring it to life and uh, maybe give you a, just a little different perspective perspective from a chef's side on the appliance. Um, so today what we're going to do is, is just that, kind of walk you through like I would a normal demonstration, give you the chefy type uh, tips and, and things that really kind of do translate to my cooking. I'll give you all the monogram um, lingo and, and, and some of the specs and whatnot, walk you through all the different offerings that we have. And just like Corwin said, anytime that you guys have questions, please, please, please let me have them. Type them in the chat box, unmute yourself and interrupt me if you want, that's okay. Um, we'd like to get the conversation going throughout the, throughout the training. <clears throat> now, to uh, not delay too long here, I'll introduce to you guys the five-in-one oven. Now the five-in-one oven um, with Advantium cooking technology is our speed product. It is our multi-function product. And I like to say it's a tiny bit of real estate in the kitchen with high functionality. Functionality. It gives you everything you need or everything you can get out of a large format oven in a smaller cavity plus so much more. I often tell my guests as I'm introducing the, the five in one oven, um, I will tell them like basically any question you're thinking right now, does it do this, does it do this? The answer is probably yes. Um, so it can kind of take a, uh, a conversation that if you look at it singularly, each mode one by one, and we say five in one, but there's even more than that. But if we look at them each individually like that, it becomes a very understandable appliance. But if we throw the whole ball of performance at you, it can really become a, a tool of confusion when it really is a tool uh, of, of really perfect cooking. So to keep the confusion out of it, um, when I start talking about the five-in-one oven, I will talk about everything that our ownership and our clients all understand and have used before. And then I'll finish with what makes this just a little bit more complicated. Before we get into that, I wanna take, the, take a moment and share my screen with you to show you that um, all the different install options that we have on, on this um, five-in-one oven. So I'm gonna share that with you real quick, and then we'll go over here. Yes, even Chef John can do a little bit of this computer stuff. You put my knife down occasionally, and I can, uh, I can click a keyboard with the best of them. So um, there's our little monogram guy there. Um, I'm gonna come back to this in, in just a second. We're gonna start at the end, that's okay. Uh, because I want to show you what we have to um, offer in the five-in-one oven. Um, of course, Corwin mentioned the minimalist uh, collection as well as the statement collection. The collection I have here in the kitchen today is our statement collection. It's got that rounded handle with brass accents on the ends. And then the minimalist collection is that very, very sleek look. Um, very refined handle, extruded aluminum handle uh, that, that just gives it a different, per, uh, a different appearance with less stainless steel on it and more of that uh, black glass. You can see on the left-hand side, or I think it's the right-hand side on your screen, is the 120 volt models, 27 inch, 30 inch, um, improved installations with, with uh, uh, above storage drawers, um, wall oven above or below it. Um, you could add another five in one oven in there. Um, you can even uh, uh, build it in under another microwave if, if that's what you, you'd like. You can see on the accessories, and I'll point some of those out, that with the accessories included, um, whether it's a 120 volt or 240 volt model, the accessories are basically the same. 
Um, what's different when you get in, uh, go 120, 120 volt versus 240 volt is of course that power requirement. And when you're in a 240 volt unit, um, it is one of those things where more is more. We say that in a 120 volt unit, um, a five in one oven will cook about four times, three to four times um, faster than a normal oven, where in a 240 volt, you can almost double that or, or cut that time in half. And we're really cooking, you know, eight times, four to eight times faster than a normal oven in a lot of our, our um, recipes with the 240 volt unit. Um, when it comes to the 240 volt unit, you can also see the only thing that we're not able to do with that 240 volt unit is put it below the countertop. 120 volt can go below the countertop, UL coded, everything's great with that. As soon as you step up to the 240 volt unit, whether it's the minimalist or the statement collection, then you are not um, approved to put that below the countertop. But again, all of the accessories and the functionality basically the same between the two, um, the two five and one ovens here. Now, are, you, yeah. are, you, are you sharing your screen right now? Cause I can't yeah. see it. I, I'm not seeing it. Has anyone else seen the share? Yeah, I'm seeing everything. I'm going to run through how to pin you again, Chef John, cause it looks I like- I don't see it either. There's some people in the chat that are having trouble seeing you. So I'm going to run through. Nope. Really no fun. problem. Yeah, guys, anytime there's an issue like that, just stop me and I'll, I'll make sure you can see it because, like I said, you know, I'm usually holding a knife and not a laptop in my hand all day. <laughs> no, you're fine. So, all right, everybody, you may have missed this portion of the introduction. On your team's meeting, in the middle of the video, you're going to see some icons. There's an icon <laughs> with two people on it, and it should say show participants. You're going to click that icon and you should see a list of the meeting participants on the right and you're going to scroll until you see John Liddell and should be in alphabetical order. And then to the right of his name, you're going to see three dots. Click those three dots and then you're going to see an option to pin him. And that way, when you pin his video, he will be front and center. I hope that works for everyone. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, yeah. When I click on the two people, I get a list of names on the left. They're not in alphabetical order, and there are no dots to click on at all. So I'm not sure where I'm going wrong, but I haven't. I, I can see you guys, but I can't see anything on a, that you guys are putting on the screen. You said you saw the list of people, right? Yeah, but it's all the names are on the left. And yep. OK, and then there's no option to click on any dots. Are you seeing a microphone next to everybody with the slash through it? Let me go back and look. OK, sorry. To, I'm hey, sorry Corwin, Corwin, that happened to me last week. And in that case, it was that I wasn't clicking all the way on the right on the purple participants box to start. Way okay. Right. I don't know even know. I'm the God, purple this is participants box. That may be what she's not getting. The purple participant. Okay. John, and I'm looking for John Liddell, and there's no microphone by John Liddell, and it says guest. Three dots. Click the three dot. If you hover your mouse over his name and go over to the right, you should see the three dots. Oh well, you guys just go ahead. I'll keep trying to figure it out. It's not it's not working like that on mine for some. Yeah, reason. and I'm gonna I'm only gonna okay. spend another two minutes on yeah. the shared yeah. screen, and then go we're ahead. gonna go Sorry live. So, no problem. We can we're we're all learning something. I'm sure. No problem. All right, guys. So, um, just real quickly here, we we talked about the different um, options that Monogram has in the five and one oven, and some of the differences um, install wise, widths, and and a little bit of the appearance as well. One thing that they share also that's um, um, just the same is that we have a H or sorry a smart HQ app that makes this um, Wi-Fi enabled, re remote enabled, um, comes with monitoring so we can heat things up, check on what is cooking, um, cookbook partner apps um, that we're uploading more and more recipes all the time. We used to say that this unit had 175 pre-programmed recipes in it, and that's still true. But now with this new Smart HQ app, 
we the, the options are endless. And where we draw these, these inspiration for these recipes are endless as well. And you can literally tune into the, um, the recipe right here on the HQ app. And you can see whether we're picking um, our Advantium there, it's listed as, and then we're going into crisp or reheat, fresh, maybe we're running a microwave setting, maybe on the oven modes, we just wanna preheat um, because it's getting to be halftime in the game and we're getting ready to throw the uh, jalapeno poppers in. So we can preheat from the couch through our HQ app. Um, you can see here on this screen, very easy to find recipes, artichoke spread, baked chicken salad, and then you can go into more advanced sections as well and go, you know what, I've got some um, beef for my main entree. Um, I'm looking to make a, 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 a um, appetizer out of it, and it's more of a holiday dish. And this app will actually compute and spit you out a great recipe um, to go along with what is in your pantry today, which we've been doing a lot of lately. So you can see on this screen, again, bread pudding example. This is just a great way to show you how in depth we went with the, um, with the recipe. And this is one of our materials that you guys will get and use and learn to so learn. Your screen isn't shared. That again? It was, so we'll just, it was shared, so we'll just skip off of it. Okay. All right, cool, guys. So that app there, I, I have to show you on that screen. You know, I, I'm not normally playing around with the computer screen as much, but with that app, it was the best, or with that screen, it was the best way to show you the app. Um, we've put a lot into it, and what I'm loving about our, uh, our, our app is that it's still growing. It's still building. We're still taking input and it's always gonna be better and better with more resources. Now today, I'm working on our statement five in one, um, five in one oven with Advantium Speed Cooking Technology. That's a whole mouthful and it says a lot about what our product does, um, but it doesn't say everything. I mean, the, the name of this would be probably five paragraphs five paragraphs long if we put everything it does in the name. So five in one oven is where we started, but it's not where we stopped. So to begin with, we built this new version with this great LCD screen up here. Past versions had some knobs on them, had some push button functionality, a little bulkier. We took that all the way off and went to a clean front slate here. Again, hard to see the dial with all the uh, reflection in this space here. But again, a great LCD screen up here. And the nice thing about that is, as I let that go idle, it changes into this very darkened monochromatic clock that is just classy. It's timeless, literally, um, and it adds a nice touch into your kitchen. And you always have a very slim line visual of what time it is. So that screen does go totally black with just a little bit of that clock in the background. You can adjust that lighting again. One of the things we're doing with all of our, our, our new monogram appliances is giving you adjustability on volume control and lighting control because we want more of those things tailored to our customers, to our ownership. So again, the five in one oven, we can do that with as well. Now we'll go through this whole section here, but as I do, I'm gonna open this door up and more try to point out some of the different features. So five in one means that we can convection bake, we can broil, we can microwave, we can proof, we can warm, we can toast. I know I'm already on six, see, I told you it was more than five. So basically, like I tell my customers, if you're thinking maybe it does that, yes. The answer is yes, of course it does. So to begin with, we have a convection fan in the back. That convection fan allows us to take this oven rack here, slide it in, and then using the oven setting, adjust this oven from bake, broil, or convection um, from 250 degrees all the way up to 450 degrees. Those oven temperatures give me the availability to do anything in here, convection baking, just like I would on my normal large format oven. Now, the results are the same though. 
because we put that convection fan in there, but we didn't change anything about it like we have in our pro ranges or our wall ovens. We kept the heating element behind that convection fan. So when that fan pushes out air, it's actually pushing out hot air into the environment. And as that air circulates, the convection fan distributes it evenly. So if I put cookies on here, a roast, um, roasted potatoes, vegetables, anything you do in your normal oven, super even, same results as your normal oven. Now, the results are the same. The cooking process is different by the preheat. The preheat meaning with the five in one oven, we basically skip the preheat process because instead of doing a, a standard broiler in here, what we've inserted is a 1500 watt halogen light that runs the length of the five in one oven. Now, halogen lights are not something like I took, I didn't take a halogen light baking class in culinary school. Um, it wasn't in my textbook anywhere. But when I think of the performance of halogen, what I know about it is as soon as I activate this oven to go on to let's say 350 degrees convection bake, and leave my rack in here, the broil element, or in this case, the halogen element comes on and illuminates, it gets hot immediately, shine down, shines down very bright and very evenly, and it actually takes this into the speed oven realm because we go from room temperature to 350 degrees in about two minutes, two and a half minutes. That's like skipping the preheat. There's folks out there in the industry that preheat to 350 in 22 minutes. Our speed oven preheating there exactly two, two and a half minutes. You're ready to bake cookies, roast vegetables, and that's because of that halogen light. We're gonna use that halogen light in a lot of different ways, just like our convection fan back there. Um, but before we do, we're gonna take this out here. And again, that rack comes with, comes with it. Before we move off of this guy here, guys, um, glass tray. Everybody's looking at this going, oh gosh, John, what are you going to tell me? This is a microwave too? Yes, this is a microwave too. It does all of your microwave functionality. So sure, it's a convection oven, but on the microwave side, we're boiling water, heat. I mean, you probably saw me heating up my tea in here um, throughout the, the, the warm up here a little bit ago. We can defrost anything you do in a normal microwave can be done in here but it has some extra functionality to it where we can do just a beverage sensor reheat. We can do a popcorn reheat. It has a sensor plate of food reheat. Um, so there's a lot more depth into the microwave functionality, but it's always important for my, my customers to know that it's very easily laid out. So you don't, even though this is a five, six, seven in one oven, it, you don't have to search through thousands of lists to find that express button when you just want to heat up your pizza late night. It's right here on the main screen. You can hit express, it'll add 30 seconds. You can hit microwave, turn on as many seconds as you want. So it's trying to be smarter than me right now because it wants the door closed. <laughs> and John, so, huh? speaking of the um, microwave capability, uh, we did have a question in the chat about percent of appliances that are made in China, um, which I know the um, the microwave technology does have to come from China, but I don't know if there's anything else you can expand. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to kind of tap dance around that one because I don't have the exact percentages. I do know that I've, I've been in the industry long enough to know that everyone's microwave or components are most mostly basically the whole box and, and functionality does does come out of China, then we dress dress them up. Um, I don't know what, if there's someone else out there that doesn't have to get them from China or something, but that's, that's as much as I know. Yeah, as far as we know, all microwaves do have to come from China, um, but I, nothing else that we manufacture comes from China, correct? I don't believe so. I mean, there's always any more. There's always a component in your car or something that was, you know, manufactured somewhere else and assembled somewhere else. So I would I would I would have to kick that to someone else to answer it even close to accurately. Hey, sure. hey John, 
Hey, yeah. John, yes, all the microwaves do, that portion of it does come from China for every appliance manufacturer. Got it. Thank you. I thought so. I just, you know, not sure. Thank you, Sherry. All right. If there's not anything else, we'll continue down the road here. So we talked a little bit about that convection baking, and I know we all are very familiar with it. Um, again, it's very important for me to reiterate that this is a convection baking oven. It's not going to give you results that are kind of like your convection oven or not even close. They're exactly the same. So full-fledged convection oven, two and a half minute preheat time most of the time. 1500 watt halogen light on the top that we can use just as a broiler. So that's gonna shine down really bright. I can you know, do some little adjustabilities on there, get really great broil results because it preheats super quick. Again, the other tray I wanna show you here is our bake tray. Again, it's one of the accessories that comes with the oven. It locks in just like a normal microwave tray does. But now we can do high temperature broiling right on here. So I could use my broil element and broil off my vegetables, roast off my vegetables on here, um, a lot of different things. The other thing we can do with that broil element is also unit, use it in unison with the bake element hidden below the tray here. There's a ceramic bake element down there. So as we're sending top heat, back heat, we're also gonna send heat from the bottom, which we do in our large ovens as well, bake, broil, and convection. Um, but we thought with our speed oven, with our five-in-one oven, let's make it full functioning. So we give you that bottom heat. But because we use a halogen light on the top, we can actually match bottom heat and top heat and activate this oven to be a toaster oven. So now let's say Chef John has, you know, two minutes to run out the door, eat his pizza and run out the door. Well, I'm microwaving that. When I come home at night, I might have more than two minutes to heat my pizza. So I actually might use my five in one oven as a toaster oven to reheat my, my pizza, my grilled cheese, my steak fries, just giving it a little bit crisper result when I have just a little bit more time. Or the simple function of making toast. We all have toasters, there's crumbs everywhere. You haul that thing in and out, you scrape your knuckle trying to get it out of the, the cabinet door. It's a big deal. I've spent a lot of my life pressing that little toaster button down. I don't care to do it at home anymore or get the toaster out. With this, I can toast eight English muffins at the same time, perfectly toasted. Um, and I always urge my clients to prove to themselves that toasting in the five in one oven is exactly like their toaster. They say, come on back in, bring your white bread, bring your gluten free, your potato starch, whatever you're eating this day. There we go. And, uh, and bring it in and we'll toast it. If it's not good enough for you, you know what? I might give you 20 bucks for, your, for you know, an off the shelf toaster. It's never happened yet. So of course we can toast. Now moving past that guys, we've got baked broil convection, talked about toast, talked a little bit about microwave. Um, there's some other fun things that we can do in here before I get confusing on here. Um, we can use this cavity just as a normal warming cavity, high, medium, and low, and it gives you a temperature range there. So as we do that, I'm going to oven setting there. There it is, warm. So low is 140 to 160 degrees. Medium is 160 to 195 degrees. High is 195 to 130 or to 230 degrees, sorry. So you can kind of go, am I keeping this roast warm for just a few minutes or is it something fried? Is it a pot roast? You could even put a bowl of chili in there and just keep it warm. Whether it's chili or something fried though, you might wanna do something different with the moisture. So once you select your temperature, then you select the warming mode, crispy, or moisture control. So if it's jalapeno poppers, yeah, let's keep them nice and crisp. When it does that, it opens the vent in the front of the five-in-one oven um, and makes sure that all the moisture is kind of fed out of the cooking environment so it stays crispy. If it's my pot roast or my chili, hey, we'll go with moisture control and we'll close that vent or that damper and keep all the moisture in. So again, just giving you more functionality here in your five in one oven. Now, again, on that oven setting, there's a couple other things there we want to talk about. Sorry, just one. And that's the proof setting. 
I know probably there's a larger portion of the population out there that has heard the word proof now and even understands it after the last, you know, 40, 60 days, whatever. Um, and proofing is the step in the recipe where it says, take the bread, put it in the warmest spot in the house at grandma's house. It was the, the window facing the sun or, you know, on the, on the bench and let it double in size, let it rise. Proofing is, is the act of yeast kind of activating and creating air and allowing your pizza dough or bread to double in size. With proofing mode, what we've done is now created the perfect environment for that yeast to grow and become um, larger and airy. So we've got proofing mode on there now. I used to say that, you know, in today's kitchens that uh, most families if they proof something, they don't know they're doing it. And it's usually a pizza, a, a ball of pizza dough and they're just making pizza. So I urge folks, whether you're now the, you know, traditional French bread baker, or you're still the pizza, uh, pizza person, use that proof setting. Cause this oven, again, five in one, really all in one when we, when we talk about it. So proof, gotta love proof. Now, John, would, would you say proofing is the lowest temperature setting? Yeah, I, I'd say it's the most gentle setting. You know, you're going to hit maybe 90, 90 degrees, somewhere in there, um, which you don't really want to put your, you don't, you don't use that temperature for anything else, really. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, somebody in the chat box is asking about the minimum uh, temperature. So I would assume they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I think if you're talking about a minimum temperature, proofing is like in that 90 to 95 degree range. Uh, minimum cooking temperature. Um, when we talk about convection oven, you're not going to go lower than 250 degrees. And at 250 degrees, and let me double check because I, I don't you. think, yeah, I'll check. Yeah, they didn't go any lower on this one. And at 250 degrees, we stopped there because that gives you um, braising temperatures, low and slow. Anything below that 250, you know, it's it's not it's not really um, what we need from this oven. Okay. Perfect. All right, guys. So, some of the other things that we can do in here, um, besides the listed. Um, or, or what I've already listed, um, we've got a little steam clean functionality. Guys, this is not a steam oven. This um, does have steaming capabilities where you can do microwave steaming, where we have a little microwave steam bowl or steam clean um, because of the microwave functionality and the speed cooking when it comes to the oven. Um, it, it'll show you on the image here, it says requires a glass tray. So I put the glass tray back in. And then it says, Tiff, to create enough steam, pour a half cup of water into a microwave safe bowl. And then, okay, after you do that, you shut it and it runs it on a gentle steam clean cycle where some of those built up foods and greases and nastiness um, will break down a little bit. You just take your paper cloth and, and wipe that right off. And it just becomes a lot easier to clean. Um, this oven is not self-cleaning from an oven functionality though. I do get that question quite often. And it is not because of all the microwave elements and all the multifunction that we have in there. We don't want to bring it up to you know 800 degrees. And I'm sure there's some other engineering uh, reasons behind that, um, but it's not in there as of right now. Now, let me remove this tray. The other tray that this guy comes with is one of these guys. I don't know, maybe you can see it on an angle there a little bit better but it's got those grill grates on it where you can do high temperature cooking on here and really get grill marks and grill flavor. Uh, the grooves allow for the fat to kind of melt off, just giving us a much better cook. A lot of times when I'm using this tray here, I'm going to use that um, on speed cooking. Um, and, and speed cooking is what we're most familiar with it being called. In the new minimalist and statement ovens, we call it precision cooking. And precision cooking means we did the work. We did the recipes. We engineered the algorithms. And I still don't know, know what that means. I, I just know how to pronounce it. Um, we engineered the algorithms in there so that when I say I want to bake a chicken, I just put my chicken in there, select the weight, and hit go, and the oven does all the work. I made that sound very simple. It, 
the next part I'm going to talk to you about doesn't really sound that way because who knows how to microwave, halogen cook, convection cook, and bake anything. Recipes aren't written that way. And when we start adding in halogen cooking, like I said, we didn't learn about that in, in culinary school. And what we did to kind of answer that question, like I said, this is really a tool of convenience, but the speed cooking or precision cooking a lot of times can make it a little bit of a tool of confusion. So to take that confusing part out and make it very convenient, we give you 175 pre-programmed recipes. And those recipes are in there, not saying how many or, you know, what did John season his chicken with? Did he brine it? The recipe is set up to ask you the important questions. The weight, is it a whole chicken? Is it a cut up chicken? And once you put it in and hit go, the five in one oven does all the thinking for you. So that means it adjusts all four of the heating elements in different percentages to give you the results that the, the public's perception of a perfect chicken would look like. So in this instance, if I went to Precision Cook and we do fresh, let me go back real quick. My lists there on Precision Cook are crisp reheat, custom, fresh or frozen. Crisp reheat is just another great way if you don't wanna use the toasting functionality, it kind of gets to the toaster a lot quicker. Um, custom, we'll get back to that. This one is a fresh recipe. And we're gonna go meat, go poultry. We got, let's see. Let's see if you guys can see that. Let me know if you can see this, if I move up here real quick. Can you see that Corwin? Yeah, we can see that pretty well. That's okay? Yeah. All right. It's a little better. So when I go to speed cook, I'm gonna select my meat there poultry. I love all the little uh, pictures behind here. Whole chicken, three to four pounds. And now this screen sort of pops up here and it tells me, all right, whole chicken, 25 minutes, required tray, metal, tip, check for doneness when prompted. Now the recipe that I was talking about illuminates at the bottom. It says upper nine. That means my halogen light here is on at 90%. L10, that means my bake element is on at 100%. M8, that means my microwave is on at 80. C8, that means my convection fan is on at, at 80% as well. When I go to start this, of course it wants me to shut the door, that'd be safe. When I go to start that, what happens is now, hands off, 100% hands off. Now the five in one oven is doing all of the cooking. And the light comes on, not because we wanna see how pretty my chicken is, but because we wanna see, because we're actually cooking with that halogen light. The halogen light is superheating the cavity of the oven. It's bringing it up to temp very quickly. The halogen light is, caramelizing, rendering fats, and creating the flavor in the dish. While that lower element, the bake element, is matching that top heat, so we get a nice evenly cooked chicken. While the convection fan circulates the air around the cavity of the oven, also passing air through the cavity of the chicken so that it cooks a little quicker and a little bit more evenly. Then what we do, is add the low level microwave. So in this case, they were on about 80% for a whole chicken. Why? Well, mass, density, bacteria. We wanna make sure that that chicken's cooked all the way through. Um, so we turn the microwave on to 80%. Now, guys, I don't bring anyone in here to teach them um, about microwaving chicken. That's not my job. That's not what I ever set out to do in this world. So it's very important to know that bake, broil, and convection on this 25 minute precisionly precision cooked chicken um, that does the heavy lifting, bake, broil and convection. No different than our wall ovens, no different than our pro ranges, bake, broil and convection are there. They create all of the flavor, uh, give us all of the visual and, and everything that's good about the dish. Now the microwave is introduced 
and microwaves are controllable. So when I say low level microwaves, when we take it down from 100% and we go down to 80, and there are some recipes where we're using 20%, but in this case, 80%. What 80% microwave over the course of 25 minutes does, sure, it still warms the chicken from the inside out, but what it gives, but what it allows to happen is to just warm it and not cook it. So we bring the temperature at 80%, only to about 160, 165 degrees on the internal temperature of the chicken. When that temperature comes up in 25 minutes, everything from the outside has matched that, that temperature, allowing it to be perfectly crisp, perfectly cooked. Remember, 25 minutes, no preheat time. So you take the chicken out of the refrigerator, into the oven, start the cooking process. Are there any questions about that part right now? I'm gonna go through a couple other options on that, but before I, I do, anything out there, Corwin? Yeah, yeah. Are um, from the chat box here. Um, just, a, we have a question about how does it do, can you cook more sort of like luxurious foods like lobster and filet mignon? Sure, sure, absolutely. I mean, there's, the, the, the options are really endless. Um, I have taken a lot of my best recipes and written speed cooking recipes for them. You know, I've got uh, some out there on Instagram for like this baked ricotta that you put on a fancy charcuterie board. One of my absolute favorites. And a lot of times um, there's three things I talk about in this demo. Of course, the chicken. Um, and then on the opposite end of chicken is vegetables. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but the most luxurious thing and look at our, our Instagram, I think it's up there, um, is center cut Chateaubriand, beef tenderloin. Um, you're talking between cheapest, maybe 50, $60 to feed six people tops. Uh, most expensive, 120 bucks, just for that center cut beef tenderloin. And I take blue cheese, horseradish, a little bit of um, sour cream or mayonnaise or yogurt, whichever one you like, and uh, garlic, I paste it on top. And all I do is follow the pre-programmed recipe in here. Again, precision cook, fresh, meat, beef, tenderloin, one and a half to two pounds, and in 18 minutes, with the microwave on at 20%, I cook this tenderloin to medium rare. And it is absolutely, absolute dynamite on the table. You could put the people at the table, have, put out a bottle of wine and actually start the tenderloin. And they, had, they would have no idea that you started cooking a whole beef tenderloin when you sat them down. So you definitely have to check out tenderloin. You have to do follow uh, follow my salmon recipes, my shrimp recipes. Um, yeah, it's the, the sky's the limit. Thank you. And then we have a couple of technical questions. Maybe I'll save to the end, or if you cool. want to answer them now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and, and and talk to you just a little bit about the beef versus the chicken versus the vegetables because I did say we have 175 recipes in here for precision cooking. And they're not all fancy, guys. You can do the kids' chicken fingers in there. You can do the frozen pancakes. Anything that, that, that has microwave instructions on it definitely exists um, within here. Um, but of course, we show off the most when we get into really producing the center cut or the, 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 the centerpiece of the meal, as well as the side dishes from fresh start to finish. So if we look at that chicken where we, we need to make sure that it has mass, that, uh, it's got mass and uh, density and bacteria in it. So we want to cook it through 80% microwave. Okay. Now I can assume 99% of y'all out there, if I brought you in and cooked my beef tenderloin with 80% microwave on there, sliced into it and gave you a nice well done piece, you'd go, John, you know what? That's really not for me. That must be a bad beef oven. And it is not because now we reduce the microwave level to 20% versus 80. And it's a good kind of like mental visual there, cooked chicken all the way through 165 degrees, 18 minute roasted uh, center cut beef tenderloin, 20% microwave on. It's absolutely beautiful all the way through 132 degrees, 
perfectly even center. Moisture content is, is, is high, um, and it's because we reduced the level of the microwave to keep it warming the tenderloin because we want it done in 20 minutes, but not to cook it. We just want to warm it from the inside. Again, with the tenderloin, just like the chicken, bake, broil, and convection, do the heavy lifting and produce the results that we need and want to see on our plate. When it comes to the performance of the five-in-one oven for vegetables though, we don't need a microwave, right? I mean, chicken or asparagus, let's say, you can pick that out of the ground right now up in Michigan, wash it or not, eat it, you're fine. You'll probably live, you'll love it actually. You do the same thing with the chicken, the results are gonna be a little bit differently. So we cook the chicken through once again, we warm the beef through once again. But when it comes to our vegetables, we, we don't have to have a microwave on. So even when we precision cook, options of different levels of all the different heating elements, and also the option of not having one of those elements on at all. So when we roast our asparagus in here, it only takes seven minutes. And it's not, there's no preheat time, again, with precision cooking. And after seven minutes, your asparagus come out caramelized, crispy, crunchy, but no microwave is present because we don't need it to cook your, your vegetables as quickly. So I do um, Brussels sprouts in about 14 minutes, perfectly caramelized, asparagus in seven, chicken 25 minutes. Um, some of the other things that, that we really enjoy in there are casseroles. Um, I'm a big planner when it comes to my meals at the end of the night, night at home. I like to have everything done and I like to enjoy my wine while it cooks. With the five in one oven, I come home, grab that casserole dish directly out of the refrigerator, right into the five in one oven. And again, because we have halogen um, lighting up here, we skip the preheat process. So anytime we precision cook, you pop it in the oven within 20 minutes, dinner is on the table. And, and, and a lot of times because we can cook it quickly, it's more healthy and gives us more health benefits, especially when it's coming to vegetables. There's lots and lots of us that overcook our vegetables in a lot of different ways. When it's pre-programmed like this, you have the advantage of treating this oven almost like your sous chef, where I wanna make my chicken piccata, I wanna make the centerpiece of the meal, but I don't really get a whole lot of enjoyment about making my asparagus anymore. So we throw it in the oven, hit the button just like we do every other night, and it comes out perfect every single time. Now guys, this is a whole lot to take in in a 40 minute conversation. I do understand that. And I do welcome your questions if you have them even later on and you need to email one of our team um, because whether you're, um, we, we have a whole new, a whole new um, thing we, we, we always talked about. We've just put it in the forefront of ownership. And I am always a, available to our owners to help with recipes, to send recipes. And whether you're an owner uh, in sales, architect or design, we treat you like an owner too. So anytime you have questions like this, please let us have them. And I'd be happy to spend more time or give you more resources on this unit. Um, because just like when you're sitting in front of me live, and of course, you know, it's a little different experience when you get to taste a steak and some veggies and your gooey cake out of there. Um, but just like you're, you're sitting in, in front of me, you know, I want to make sure that that you, you have what you need. So um, try to think if there's anything else out there. Oh, I know. So just like everybody in, uh, would be in the showroom sitting in front of me, at the end of this, they still do have questions. It's a lot to take in. But this is a piece that not everyone knows about and not everyone is told about. And I'm hoping from this training um, that you, you can kind of key, key in on a few things that, that I've said that will speak to you or speak to your clients so that when they walk through the door, you have something to capture them with because it would be hard to spend the 30 minutes that they have in the showroom with you just talking about this. So key in on a few of those things. And if there's a couple of recipes that you really love, just like we do at home, and just like we do at the showroom here. Now we've put a little, a cool little section on the LCD screen here, and it's a heart button. That means with something that's multifunction like this unit, you don't have to scroll through seven or 175 recipes every time you're looking for chicken fingers. The next time you get to chicken fingers, you scroll through and hit that heart button. And then from the main screen, your chicken fingers live 
on the main screen forever until you delete them. So great ways to save everything, great resources through the app, great resources in the unit, connected, it's the best way to go. If you connect this, that's when you get the full functionality out of it. If your clients are like, hey, you know, Jeff, John, love the connectivity, just leave it out of my home, doesn't have to be connected either. So we, we get that. Um, Corwin, did I miss anything or anything else you want me to add? Um, I just have a couple of questions that are a little on the technical side. So I'm not sure really how in depth um, we can go in on some, but somebody yeah. asked how often do you need to change the light bulb? I don't know. That's if a that great question. I, I get this question and, and I love it because I get the question and, I, and, and folks buy the five in one. And they get, they, then they have recipe questions and I never hear anything about a light bulb. I have never replaced the halogen light in any of my five in one ovens in the showroom over the last seven years. And I kid you not, in two years time, I can put more hours on one of these than anyone would in probably 25 years. Um, so in seven years, I talked to two folks that have said, and they came in with a smile on their face. And they said, John, you know, I had to replace that light bulb I said, oh no, I'm so sorry. You know, can I can I help you with something? You know, did I hope we took care of you? They're like, yeah, there was really no need for you guys to take care of me, but you did, because it was 10 years old. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I said, yeah, occasionally, even in my 20-year-old suburban, I gotta replace a headlight. So it's no oh, big deal. Good. I'm glad you had the insight to answer that. It's awesome. Yeah. Um Someone else asked, do you need to be conscious of the microwave being on with nothing in it, similar to how you would always keep a glass of water in an old style microwave just in case? Yeah, so this, I think this kind of goes to some of the, yeah, like you said, really technical side of it, where if there's nothing for us to focus that cooking energy on, and again, there's an engineer out there who's going to laugh at me, um, <laughs> cooking energy on, it's got to focus somewhere, right? So it's kind of going to something that's more dense, like the, like the metals, and it can dull the magnetron. So yeah, here in the showroom, I run them empty for demonstrations and everything. I kind of have a company that will help me out if I need a new one. <laughs> um, but at, at home, I'm not running them um, and empty uh, at all. It will prompt you when you're using just the microwave uh, setting to make sure you have a glass tray, not your metal tray in there. Um, but even these metal trays, because we use these for precision cooking and they are metal, um, but and precision cooking could have microwaves in there and it doesn't arc or do anything to the, the, the magnetron. And that's another thing that I've never had an issue with is the actual microwave element dull getting dull over time like i do like a over the range microwave hood kind of system would okay great that answered another question in the chat box let me just see oh um will new recipes be pushed through the wi-fi um so yes i know Yes yeah. and no. So here's what we're doing with that. And and guys, you know, like this is also one of those things where like, we can have I could have a call on it, you know, two weeks ago and it might be different today. But my last my last call on it and every call, the, the platform just gets better and better um, is that uh, we will be sending. There's a company, I think it's I is it in, in you with? In, uh, in, it, it. in it, sorry, yeah, in it, um, that we partnered with, and I don't know the whole background story, but they have just a huge recipe log online right now. And what we're doing with in it is they're taking recipes and developing them for us and um, adding them to our Smart HQ app. So you will actually access every single new recipe through there. And you want to do it that way because the user interface and the ownership experience through that app is far more elevated than we'd be able to upload and give you right here into that. So, and then we'll give you more organizational tools in there and all kinds of fun stuff. So the recipes are just gonna keep coming and coming, yeah. Yeah, awesome. and then one more. Yeah. Do you know how many favorites you can store? Originally it was 30. Yeah. So I think we're, I, I believe we're still at, at 30. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And remember guys, I, 
I released, I think, I think I did five new recipes on this, like in, in a couple of days when we got it installed. And then I don't think I've seen it since. So <laughs> I'm learning, I'm learning some of this with y'all too. Definitely. Thank you, John. Anybody else have anything? Hey, John, um, in yeah. terms of the custom recipes, can you still like take a, a, a precision cooking recipe and then modify it to save it? I know you've done that in the past. Yeah, thanks, Sherry. So guys, there's a custom recipe setting in here. Um, and custom recipe, you, you could do anything from a microwave recipe to maybe you just want to have, um, you know, something pre-programmed for your kids' chicken fingers. Um, so you can still use the custom setting on here when it comes to precision cooking and microwaving. Um, and you can, it allows you to adjust time. It allows you to adjust the bake, broil, convection, and microwave elements in 10% increments from zero all the way up to 100. So custom cooking a lot of times is for the, the, the owner that has um, precision cook before has gotten comfortable with how to use it and what it's about and they want to try their own recipe because honestly using this oven on a custom cook is really no different than playing around with a, a large format or a wall oven um, and going I have no idea what's going to happen but let's just test it and see so here you actually have a little bit more control with that because I can go oh my lasagna that I've never made before is now burning on top so I could shut the top element off or the bottom element or add more heat to the top of the pizza while it's baking. And to answer Sherry's question there, um, which was, can you do that same kind of customization on a pre-programmed recipe? The answer is actually yes. So you still can do that, but it looks just a little bit different. So if I go to that chicken here, let me just, Pull it up so I can make sure I describe it in the right way. Now, when the chicken starts cooking, there's a power button right here under the 25 minute time. And if I hit that power button, that's like what I used to hit power 10. And then it brings up all of the power levels here. And I'm gonna take a little walk with you, Sherry. It's been a while since we took a walk together. Can you see that at all? Yeah. Okay, so now you see the power levels, upper, lower, microwave, and convection. With the slide of a hand, now on the fly, I can adjust any of those elements and now get a, a custom recipe from one of my um, pre-programmed recipes. Perfect. Thanks. I get the question once a week from my dealers, so that's great. Thank you. Sure. Then, yeah, it has to. It used to be that power button was off to the side, and you could access it before the cooking process started. As soon as the cooking process starts, that power button comes up, and then it also says like add thirty seconds or pause. So it gives you some other flexibility in there too. We're getting a lot of thank yous. Great job, oh, John. Thank you. Guys, thank you. I know we're just about ready to hit our time mark here. So if you have to skate, I understand. But thank you so much for logging in and, and following along. And I really do mean it. Anytime you guys or your customers have questions, please let me have them or Corwin as well. Yes, thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a great afternoon. Oh. Yep, I do too. So I think that's if that's it, Corona, we, we're all set, I think, right? Yeah, um, somebody just asked when you open the door, did it have a pink light inside? Oh, I saw that too on my screen because it kind of <laughs> did look pink. So the, um, I, I believe it was the halogen light just cycling down. Gotcha. It, doesn't, it doesn't look pink like right now it's on but it might just be that yeah it totally looks pink on camera but it doesn't, it doesn't in here so in here it's just i can see right through it that's crazy it just must be how it translates through the camera i have no idea it's a little bit above my pay grade <laughs> you and me both anything else no we're looking good
All right. Well, once again, thanks a lot, guys. I'll, uh, hopefully we'll see you guys tomorrow on the call or uh, Thursday for sure. So take care. Have a great day. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you, John. Thank you very much. Thank My pleasure. You.